you are participating in this event on Sunday, but you are not organizing the event. There's been criticism of Mayor Bloomberg for saying no elected officials are actually going to speak, deliver speeches. They'll be speaking, but not speeches. And no clergy. Do you agree with those decisions? I, I agree with no elected officials giving a speech. Uh, this, I think that is appropriate. Mm. Not to, to make this about the heroes who died on September 11th, to make this about the courageous people who responded on September 11th and not about some politician getting up and giving a speech. I agree with that. But I do think it's appropriate at an event like that to have clergy. Mm. Uh, it, and it's something I would have done. But how do you make the choice? I think that the mayor is saying, well, if you have say you have a Catholic priest and then you have a rabbi, but do you have to have any mom and then other people feel left out and how do you make the decision? And so it's better to just stick with, you know, nothing. Well, part of what leadership is about is say, making the tough decisions. And I don't think you say, well, this is convoluted and somebody's feelings might get hurt and because of that we're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would have been right to have a, a or a number of religious figures uh, at uh, the event, and the one that uh, Deputy Mayor Washington organized in Yankee Stadium, we had, we had Protestant and Catholic clergy, we had rabbis, and we had imams, and I thought it was very appropriate. It's going to take place. It's taking place at a time, obviously, when the city is extra jittery. I mean, obviously, people are going to be upset because of all of the memories that come back, but now there's a terror threat. It's, it's obviously very frightening for a lot of people, brings back scary memories. Do you believe that America is safer at this point? I do. I mean, uh, we're, more, we're more aware. You know, we, uh, ten years ago we wouldn't have known there was a terror, terrorist a threat that was credible. Mm -hmm. uh, now we do. So, so it's not as though these threats didn't exist ten years ago or twelve years ago. The towers were first blown up in 1993. Right. And there were uh, continuing attacks between then and September 11th in the U.S. and ultimately on September 11th and overseas and ultimately on September 11th. So I think we are safer, but that's not to say we're safe. Uh, we have great professionals out there putting their lives on the line to keep us safe. We are more conscious of the existence of those groups that have attacked us before and want to do us again. But I don't think that makes means that we're less safe. I think we're more safe. We're just more aware of the real dangers that are out there. And yet, I saw a poll, I think today, that suggested that a, a fair number of people don't feel like they have to worry about terrorism anymore. I mean, the danger, I think Giuliani and others have suggested, is complacency. Are we complacent as New Yorkers, see, I don't as Americans? I don't think... Uh, Americans are complacent. I don't think we should be obsessed with living in fear and looking over our shoulder. We have a Homeland Security office. We have the NYPD. We have the New York State uh, Police, who are, who are tremendous. We have a uh, joint terrorism task force. Let them worry about it. Mm. And we have to be aware. Uh, but hey, this is America. This is the greatest country the world has ever known, and we're entitled to live in freedom and openness and, and with confidence in our lives and not be looking over our shoulders. Yeah, but you, for example, are very recognizable. Yeah. Uh, do you worry it about your own way. safety? No. You're a tall guy. I mean, you know, people know who you are. <laughs> they tend to do know who I am. No, it doesn't, uh, doesn't concern me at all. Hmm. Uh, we live in a country with 315 million people. If you have one in a million is a, is, a, is a nut job. That means you have more than 300 nut jobs out there, uh, to be perfectly honest. But you can't worry about it. You know, we have great police. We have great professionals. We have great terrorism experts. We should be aware. Uh, and I think we have a heightened sense of awareness. But you started out by saying how this poll shows most Americans don't worry about terrorism. I think most Americans shouldn't. Hmm. There's a difference between awareness of the threat and worrying about it in their lives. And, and, you, I, and I, you know, the mayor took the subway. Right. And that's the right thing to do. I remember taking the subway downtown two days after the attacks, and all my security guys were saying, well, we don't know about sarin or anthrax or right. something I else. I remember those days. Yeah, yeah, you remember that. And, I'm just, and I said, well, you're right. We don't know. But everybody else is going to get on the subway, and so am I. And that's the right way to live our lives. And the administration, the Obama administration's response to terrorism, are you satisfied with that? No. Uh, I, I, Somehow I'm not surprised no, by that I, I'm really not. We have done nothing to secure, well, very little to secure our border. Uh, and while the vast majority of people coming across our borders are coming to build a better life for their families, 
We need to know that the people, everyone coming here is coming legally and for the right reasons. I also think that the whole concept of trying Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in a civilian court mm. and giving terrorists Miranda warnings and American constitutional rights is absurd. I mean, the fact that you can have a shoe bomber on a plane and instead of interrogating him when he's not even an American citizen, we read him as Miranda warnings and don't, in, don't interrogate him until he has defense counsel is utterly absurd. And thank God we haven't had an attack over the course of the last 10 years. And they are doing some things right. I do believe that. But I, I don't think they understand that the war that existed before September 11th of 2001 continues to exist on September 11th and 2001. And yet you took a pass. You took a pass in 2012. Well, it's a difficult personal decision to decide to uh, run or not run for public office. And I do believe this country is headed in the wrong direction. And I think a large part of that is because of a completely failed Washington, and in particular an administration that uh, doesn't understand uh, the nature of America or the American people and is making policy decision after policy decision that is wrong and hurting our economic opportunity. Uh, but that doesn't translate into being necessarily a candidate. But mm -hmm. I do want to be involved. I will be out there speaking up with uh, the, for the things that I believe in. Do you have a favorite in the GOP field? Not at this point. Are you going to make an endorsement? I may or may not. I just don't know at this point. One of the things I said from the beginning when I was thinking about running is you know, it shouldn't just be about personality. It should right. be about plans. And you know, it shouldn't just be about criticizing President Obama. It should be about laying out an alternative vision. How are you going to deal with the deficit and the debt? How are you going to deal with getting our economy moving forward again? And I have not seen any candidate on my side come out with that positive plan that agenda for the future of America that I think the American people want. I think the overwhelming majority of Americans know that this is a failed administration. What they need to hear is not criticism but solutions, and that's what's been lacking from our side, and that's what I hope in some capacity to be able to offer. Well, we will be uh, keeping an ear out for you, of course, and I want to thank you very much for spending so much time with us. It's good to see you. Governor. Good to see you, Liz. Thank you.